a production of the Cape Cod Pilgrim Memorial Association. At length, and by God's providence, we espied land which we deemed to be Cape Cod. On November 21, 1620, after 67 days at sea, the 102 men, women, and children of the Mayflower rounded the hook of Cape Cod and sailed into the protection of Provincetown Harbor. Dropping anchor here in the flats off the west end of Provincetown, the men of the company shouldered their muskets and rowed the small shallop to shore, their feet touching the sands of the New World for the very first time. Blessed be the God of heaven, who has brought us over this vast and furious ocean and delivered us from all the perils and miseries thereof. Deploring exploring parties into the interior, the pilgrims weighed the potential of Provincetown's forests and moors for their new settlement, making first contact with the Cape natives, and exploring the area in general for a total of five and a half weeks. On November the 11th in this harbor, which is now overlooked by the Pilgrim Monument, the 41 adult men in the company took part in an event of even greater significance. They signed their names to what would become a defining document for the future of America, the Mayflower Compact. In this are laid the principles of civil and religious liberty and the founding practices of democracy and self-rule, which would inspire the American Constitution. We whose names are underwritten do, by these presents, solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one of another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. And by virtue hereof to enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. In witness whereof we have hereunder subscribed our names at Cape Cod. The pilgrims departed for Plymouth that winter but in 1654, their governor purchased the land from the natives for two brass kettles, six coats, 12 hoes, 12 axes, 12 knives, and a box. Provincetown was incorporated in 1727, but it wasn't until 1892 that a group of public-spirited citizens moved to commemorate the landing of the pilgrims and the signing of the Mayflower Compact by founding the Cape Cod Pilgrim Memorial Association. The organization raised $92,000, and the town of Provincetown contributed the land atop High Pole Hill in order to build an all-granite tower. Their vision was bold, ambitious, and their effort was unyielding over many years. Ultimately, the U.S. government validated that vision and contributed half of the construction costs in fact, they were so committed to the project that they imposed a $5 per day fine if the project were not completed on time, December 31st, 1909. That's how committed they were. The 4,800-pound cornerstone of the monument was laid in an imposing formal Masonic ceremony on August 20th, 1907, 
and President Theodore Roosevelt gave a speech to enormous fanfare. Specially designed railway cars carried the granite blocks up to the site. The specifications outlined that only granite from quarries in Stonington, Maine could be used, and only fresh water used for the mortar and cement work. The design by William T. Sears was inspired by the 14th century Torre del Mangia Tower in Siena, Italy. The steps and ramps of the interior were completed, the heavy oak doors were installed, and the finished 252-foot tower, the tallest all-granite structure in the country, was dedicated on August the 5th, 1910, with President William Taft presiding at the ceremony. The entire Atlantic fleet of the U.S. Navy sailed up and anchored below a Provincetown harbor, marking the birth spot of democracy in America. As a symbol of both national and global importance over the past century, the monument has welcomed nearly 10 million visitors. At 353 feet above sea level and overlooking the historic anchorage of the Mayflower, it provides, quite simply, the best 360 degree view on Cape Cod to those undertaking the climb to the top. The continuous assault of wind and salt spray does take a toll, however, even on this most sturdy of structures. With this in mind, the Board of Trustees voted to undertake a major preservation effort. Taking a cue from the latest technology used on bridges, tunnels, and aircraft, a firm called Fiber Wrap installed a cross-directional fiberglass technology throughout the interior. Though also beautiful, the refurbishment assures that the monument will continue to welcome visitors safely into the next century. I think it's wonderful how the monument has become more and more a part of the community. I mean, it's so unique. If they venture out a little bit and see more than just a few blocks on Commercial Street, I think they really realize what a beautiful, beautiful place Provincetown is. I mean, Provincetown is beautiful, and uh, the monument probably gives you one of the best overviews of the area. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, you see the entire town, you see the ocean, you can see the curvature of the Cape. It just really puts it all into context. And a museum doesn't have to be a musty, stuffy place. The Pilgrim Monument and Provincetown Museum is a strong nonprofit organization guided by a board of trustees and led by a professional staff. The association is fueled by a core income from admissions, museum shop sales, and parking. So the customer experience is top priority here. Um, I, for one, was not even aware that this monument had existed. And then when we came out to Cape Cod on vacation, we found out that this was uh, here. And it's a great monument to our early forefathers. And for those people who presume that um, they actually stopped at Plymouth, this is actually a uh, history lesson to understand that the Mayflower came in here. I saw from trees and forests over there to the uh, Atlantic Ocean over there to the sandy dunes and everything around. So we go to interesting places, and this is definitely one of them. Maybe if you're slightly afraid of highs, then it's not the best thing, but if you just want a great view of the area, then it's just so awesome. It is a great experience, great view. Uh, you can't find that view anywhere else. The idea that we're here to keep that monument uh, together, uh, keep the brick and mortar, uh, uh, maintained to a degree that allows that monument to stand tall and strong for another hundred years is, I think, so much a part of our important mission that represents so much to so many in terms of its memorial to the first landing place of the Pilgrims, to uh, all of the uh, democratic principles that evolved from that uh, historic uh, day in Provincetown Harbor. Consider the perils that uh, these brave uh, young men and women uh, uh, confronted in crossing the Atlantic, and it represents so much to so many in terms of democratic principles. Uh, the monument is always uh, has a watchful eye over us, and we to it. To realize the full promise of the next century, the Pilgrim Monument and Provincetown Museum is also dependent upon financial assistance. 
from those who believe in reminding America that the first steps to democracy were taken on these sandy shores at the tip of Cape Cod. The Pilgrim Monument and Provincetown Museum is more than a tower. We have a dynamic exhibition programming. We are reinstalling much of the uh, permanent exhibition. We have a dramatic and dynamic schedule of temporary exhibitions coming. We are uh, becoming more digital in our communications with our constituents. We want to further engage their excitement about our project. We certainly want to make our story more of a national story and spread this uh, value uh, broadly across the world using the internet and other technologies. The monument is Provincetown. There is no question in my mind about that. We have become the caretakers of the history of Provincetown. In addition to having the visitors understand our past history, I think it's important for them to understand also that we probably are the cradle of democracy. Uh, so much history has happened here, and if they go away with an understanding of that, I think we've done at least part of our job.